We have seen pseudocode in the previous lesson. It is a form of almost code that can vary a lot depending on who is writing it. For example, the following three sets of pseudocode are identical in that they allow a user to enter a word, store it in a variable, and then output the result. All three pieces of pseudocode do exactly the same thing. They declare a variable called user input, stores whatever a user types into the console into it, and then outputs the result. However, they look quite different. This is one of the issues with pseudocode. It can vary between schools and even between teachers. This means you could be given an exam question in a form of pseudocode that you are not familiar with. To get around this problem, OCR have decided to create their own written formal language called the exam reference language. It looks very similar to pseudocode, but it is a lot more formal in that it has absolutely defined ways of writing things that will not change between schools. This way everyone knows what to do. The English language is a formal language in that it has a defined set of rules that you must follow. For example, the formal rules for a complete sentence in English include the first word must start with a capital letter, the sentence must end with a full stop. The exam reference language also has rules to follow and in your exam you will be expected to get the grammar and syntax of the language as correct as possible. The point of the language is to allow you to focus on the solution to the problem. There is no compiler or integrated development environment for the ERL, so you cannot write a program with it, but you will be set questions in it and be expected to be able to interpret the code written. In addition, if you cannot remember how to write an answer in the programming language being taught in your school, for example Python, you can write an answer in the exam reference language and this will be just as good. You will need to get the syntax and language correct though. For the previous example, the exam reference language solution would be this. We'll be using the OCR exam reference language throughout the programming lessons later in this course, but let's look at some of the basics now. Let's look at variables, input, output and code comments in the ERL. Variables are created by simply stating their name. Assigning a value to a variable uses the equals sign. Getting input from a user and storing it in a variable uses the input command. Printing out to the console, displaying output to the user, uses the print command. All of the above is identical to the Python programming language. Comments, little notes we add to explain our code, are written using the slash slash symbols. This is like C++, Java and C Sharp. Let's look at a simple program to add up two numbers and look at this program line by line. Line 1, this is a comment. Comments don't actually do anything and are simply used by the programmer to remind them what a block of code does. Line 2, this declares a variable called number 1 and then prompts the user to enter a value which is stored in the number 1 variable. Line 3, this declares a variable called number 2 and then prompts the user to enter a value which is stored in the number 2 variable. Line 4, this declares a variable called result and then adds together the contents of the variables number 1 and number 2 and stores this in the result variable. And line 5, this is where the result of the calculation is displayed to the user. So, the exam reference language is a language specific to the OCR exam board. It is very similar to other forms of pseudocode. It is a formal language in that it has its own rules. You may be asked questions in the ERL and can give answers in the ERL. It allows for code comments as well as variable declarations, input and output. This is a paper-based language only and there is no compiler.